Uh, you've been linked with looking a bit like Marilyn Monroe. I mean, ha has anyone ever asked you to play the part of Marilyn Monroe in a film or no. to carry that? No, they haven't. That look on any further. Someone else did it though, right? There was an American movie. I don't. I don't know if it was ever released. They got a lot of publicity for it, and then I never saw anything on it. Mm. It never came out. Does it bother you that people tell you that you look like Marilyn Monroe? No. It's flattering. I don't think that I do, but I think it's very flattering. And I think that people that say that, um, you know, have that effect on audiences, I think that that's, wow. I mean, I couldn't ask for more. Let me take you back to the beginning, because it's been said quite often, you know, you've been hailed as a reincarnation of Marilyn Monroe, and you mention in your book that, that you've often thought perhaps you were Marilyn Monroe's daughter. I think that's sort of a symbolic um, resemblance, or, um, I don't know, I think that a lot of uh, young girls sort of uh, fixate on an image or, you know, an idea and I think that that's what that refers it's to. It's just somebody you fancied being, because we should explain, you're, you're adopted, you don't know who your real parents are, do you? Um, no, but um, I, even if I weren't adopted, I think that uh, young girls usually do that. Uh, young boys, too. I think for the first time, uh, a singer took um, a visual cue as you know, I mean, I really was inspired by film actresses and the blonde sex symbol. So I combined um, I images, which I don't really think had been done, you know, in, in music up until that point. You know, I really was inspired by Marilyn and Jean Harlow and Jane Mansfield and all these, you know, vivacious women, Carol Lombard, um, you know, on and on, and Amy Van Doren. And uh, I think that, you know, like that was really what, you know, was surprising to people and really what caught on. And, and this was, uh, that, that was really a first. So it's that same white Western culture that gave Deborah Harry her incredible success. In a sense, it was simply passed on. First from Marilyn Monroe to Blondie, her successor, Madonna. very powerful image that you're tapping into, isn't it? Sure. Well, Mick Jagger did the same thing. I always, the, the boys always had a tremendous identification with him and the girls all wanted to go to bed with him. So where would you be if we moved the sex from, from Deborah Harry? Talking we... like this. <laughs> what about someone like Marilyn Monroe? I know you sort of relate to her in a way, don't you? Um, I think I probably said that, you know, I thought that, you know, she was, you know, a real influence. I, I think that she had such a comedic sense that I really liked and, and this vulnerability as well as this sort of, you know, tough quality. And Marilyn was, Marilyn Monroe was adopted and so were you. Is that anything to do with it, do you think? I think you're always curious about, you know, who you are. If you're adopted, you sort of always want to know. You never knew your mother. There was a, an amazing rumor that went around for a while um, about uh, Marilyn Monroe being your, your real mother. Yeah, well, that, that sort of became a, um, a misquote, you know, and it sort of grew in importance, you know, um, Marilyn being who she was. Um, uh, it was sort of like an, a, an homage or some kind of a tribute, you know, to her blondness, you know. Mm -hmm. <laughs> There are a lot of interesting rumors about you that pop up online um, that you all mentioned. I'm sure you hear a bunch. The Marilyn Monroe thing, being your, your real birth mother, mm. that's online a lot. The Marilyn thing has been misquoted. I, I felt um, related to her spiritually, right. but not. I never thought that she was my birth mother. Yeah. No.